Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I'm answering a question from Instagram. Uh, Matt from Spamps Woodshop asks, Would love to see videos on anything that you might do slightly or profoundly different than the norm. Good question, Matt. I I don't think most luthiers feel that they've really invented anything groundbreaking. I mean, we're all basically working on derivatives of what other people have done and what has come before us. So there's nothing in my methodology that I think is really groundbreaking. I mean. I, I take what I see other people doing, I take what I've learned from my study, and I try to put it into a context that makes sense to me. And in doing that, there's probably nuances that I've made my own, but uh, I don't think there's anything that I've sort of invented in my practice. And I'm okay with that. I mean, I think most insurance makers would say the same. Uh, there's very few of us who are really out there inventing wheels, you know. I think I've worked really hard to develop a style that is mine. And maybe people feel that design work, because it's, it's more of the artistic side of it, maybe they feel that it's not a conscious thing, that it's just, you just kind of sit down and you let, the the pencil do its thing right but for me design is actually a pretty conscientious activity that I think a lot about as I'm doing it and I've tried to make my designs unique but not super far in left field and I've tried to make them hard to copy because one of the things I've always been bugged by is I'll see an instrument maker do something really neat, really unique, and then immediately 50 other people are doing that same, like, you know, plagiarizing basically. And uh, so I, I think I've tried to make my designs in a way that limits that. Um, and then voicing also is something that's pretty individual. I think there's no one in the world that can make a guitar that sounds like mine. And I can't make a guitar that sounds like a McConnell guitar or or a Buendia guitar, you know. But the actual methodology, the actual process of voicing, I don't do anything there that a lot of other luthiers don't do. I, it's just the 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 way that I hear things and sort of my goals in voicing and the nuances of the decision making are sort of unique to me but nothing is really groundbreaking there. Uh, you know, my specialty is art shop guitars, and in the world of art shops, one thing that I suppose is kind of unique to me is that I really focus on acoustic art shops. And the art shop world has become so dominated by this idea that they are just simply electric guitars, and I think that's really wrong, I think that's bad thinking about the instrument. So I really focus on making an acoustic instrument when I'm making an art shop guitar. And in the world of art shop guitars, that's not so common. I do things like offset my bracing, and I utilize a lot of lamination in my work. I don't laminate tops or backs, but I use lamination as a structural component. Uh, I think lamination got a bad rap, manufacturers started using laminations in cost-cutting ways so lamination became associated with cheap guitars but it's important to remember that lamination is just a method it, it just means multiple layers glued together it's really all lamination is and so the material that you use for those layers the adhesive that you use to glue them together and the way that you glue them together really varies widely. You know, you have on one end of the spectrum, you have uh, construction grade plywood, 
from Home Depot at $30 a sheet and it's basically just a conglomeration of a bunch of trash wood with a nice veneer on top or on the other end of the spectrum you have space age laminations you know so lamination is not one thing it's just a method and I think lamination is being utilized a lot more today in high-end string instruments than it has in the past I feel like in the last five years or so there's been this big shift from a few people using lamination to a lot of people using lamination and high-end guitars. My side sets are actually three three ply so I have my my maple exterior skin which is about 50 thousandths thick. You know this is what I I use as my, my this is two plies here 10 thousandths each layer so you can see one layer is horizontally grained and one layer is vertically grained and I actually when I cut this to, to go on the inside of my sides I cut it at a slight angle out of the larger sheet so the grains are not a hundred percent perpendicular or parallel to the to the exterior and so that does a few different things it it creates a lot of stability because you have that cross linking of the grains you also have in laminations you're you're playing with the neutral bending plane and you're opposing so if you take a piece of wood and you bend it like this okay this this outside surface is stretching or it's in tension and this inside surface is compressing and where the tension meets the compression is somewhere in the middle of the material and that's referred to as the neutral bending plane or the neutral bending axis axis with lamination you can play with that you can move the neutral bending plane to different areas in a, in a substrate and and achieve different things and those as you add layers the 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 tension on one layer is counteracted by the compression of the next layer. A good representation of this is this material here. This is um, this is actually balsa wood with a fiber, like a mesh fiber, uh, adhered to one side. And if I take that fiber off of that side, then you can see that this just snaps very easily in all directions right now if I take a piece that has the fiber on it okay I can bend it completely in half and there's no there's no cracks let me look Now, if I go over here and I bend the other way, now this way, now it started to fail on this side because the tape isn't there, but okay, so that is a um, a really good representation of how lamination in layering multiple pieces together can really do a lot to reduce fractural stresses, um, cracks, and increase stability and also stiffness. I mean you can't feel this but this this is not really strong but this actually requires some some force to get this moving. Now this is this is sheer strength at work so you've by by laminating you are you're creating a situation where you're taking fractural load and you're transmitting it to a to a shear uh, load so anyway lamination is really cool and it doesn't mean cheap it uh, actually when you're on the smaller scale and you're doing really high quality laminations it actually adds cost to the instrument because it adds more steps 
time and you have to use really expensive uh, adhesives and uh, materials to use as your substrates and everything so um, in any case that again that's not really something I do that's completely unique to me but it is something that is uh, not like widely across the industry utilized um, especially not until recent years um, so you know I, I hope that answers your question a little bit like I said there's nothing that I do that's really super groundbreaking I just have found ways to take what I learned from others and tweak it to work for what my goals are in my instruments and my context and everything. That's it for for this week. I will talk to you guys later. Take care. And if you like the content here, please subscribe. And if you have questions or you have video topics that you'd like to see me talk about, uh, please let me know in the comments. And I will make a video about it. I'll talk to you later.